Hello, my name is Sam. I'm from usephotoshop.com, a free tutorial, template, and photo resource. In this video, I'm going to help you understand the background eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop. I'm running the most current version at this time, Photoshop CS5. If you don't already have an image open, go to File, Open, or use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control and the letter O on your keyboard and to open up an existing image from your hard drive. I'm using this photo here. We need a couple windows open to use this tool. We will uh, open the windows by going to Window at the top in your menu and going to Layers to open up the Layers window or the Layers palette. You can also use the keyboard shortcut which is F7 and you can see the layers palette appear. We also need the tools window which we can find by going to window tools. And the tool is located sixth from the top on the left hand side and may be hiding behind the eraser tool or the magic eraser tool. If it is simply left to click and hold down you will see this menu appear and you can select the second option the magic eraser or the background eraser tool rather the keyboard shortcut is the letter E meaning if I'm using another tool and I want to use the background eraser tool simply by hitting the letter E on my keyboard I will be taken back to that tool let me show you how it works there's a few different options that we have up here that we can change. Uh, we can change the brush properties by clicking on this downward arrow. We can change the size of the brush, the hardness the, or the softness of the brush here, and also the spacing. Now here's some options that are unique to this tool. These are the sampling options. As you will see, my cursor has now changed to the the background eraser tool which is a large circle oops I just clicked there um, which is a large circle with a plus or crosshairs in the middle now wherever the crosshairs are is where Photoshop is going to sample the color from which is the uh, the background color and we have some options here for that this option which is the default is to continuously sample meaning that as I click and drag along here Photoshop will continuously sample the color of the background I'll undo that by holding down control alt and pressing the letter Z on my keyboard or I can go to edit step backward we can change this to sample once meaning that when I click it will sample just that one time when I click and now all the time I'm using this tool along here it is still using the original sample that I made back here the other, other option it gives us is to sample from the background color meaning it will sample from the color over here we can change this color by clicking on the background color and changing that to whatever color we want preferably something around the color of the background which we can go down and click your cursor will automatically change to the eyedropper tool to sample a color and we can click on the background color it will make a selection we can press OK and now our background color is set to roughly the background color of this image and since we're using this option it will sample from that color and as I click and drag along here it will use that color that we specified over here I'll undo that as you can see when I'm using this tool it's cutting into her arm a bit and that's because the tolerance is set too high the tolerance can be adjusted up here by clicking and moving this slider back and forth it's usually best to have it around 20 or 30 um, depending on your image as you will see I've lowered it to almost half of what it was before and when I click and drag it does not cut into her arm as much it still does a little bit in there which again we can lower the tolerance even more and I'll zoom in and move this image over so we can see this a bit better 
and then as you can see it's still cutting a little bit off there we can lower the tolerance again and as you can see now it's leaving her arm intact although there's some areas here of the background that it's leaving out we can just go ahead and click on uh, one of those areas uh, but you should remember to change this back to sample once and click on one of those problem areas and then go over that area again and then as I can see there's still a problem area here which I can click on and drag over and there's a little bit there which I can also get rid of and again by clicking on the problem areas and sampling those areas we can use this tool to get rid of them now there is also the limits up here which I will discuss I will undo what, uh, what I've just done here by hold on, holding down control and pressing alt on my keyboard or going to edit step backward or control alt and the letter Z rather on my keyboard and I'll undo that selection and as you'll see that will come back to where it was originally now whoops and we'll zoom out. Now, as I said, there's a few other options here in the limits. Uh, discontinuous, a fun word, uh, means that wherever the brush is, the circle, um, all the area inside that brush will be affected by this tool, even if it is not touching the original sample, which is the crosshairs in the middle. For example, if I make this brush a bit bigger by holding down the right bracket key on my keyboard. Oh, I have to make sure that's not selected. Right. There we go. It was caught up on that. Pressing the right bracket key. There we go. And as you will see when I click here, the area, even the area in her arm here, which wasn't directly touching the sample pixel because her arm was in the way it got erased too if I undo that I can show you the opposite effect when I select the contiguous option and now when I click the area in here will not be affected because it's not touching this area and we also have find edges which is very similar to the contiguous option meaning that it will only affect things that it's touching and it also makes an effort to keep the sharpness of the edges again I should probably be using a bit higher tolerance make this and uh, to s use this you simply find the tolerance that works best by experimenting and uh, I like to use uh, contiguous most of the time and simply click in the background area and drag around clicking a few times is preferred so if you make a mistake you can easily undo but simply keep sa sampling the background and going around your image and you will very easily cut out the background in little work. So that's the background eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop. I'm Sam from usephotoshop.com.